Shield in the cleanse against CLG and Link's Twisted Fate, uh, yet they are still willing to pick into it. So I think Pobelter Belter may actually focus other areas of the map well in advance, saying I'm going to ward here because that's where I think Helios is going to come. This is really risky by Helios. Red Helios by book. He like really wants this fight, but he's in the middle of enemy champions. I don't know why he stayed. He was spotted. Ignite is on one attack from dead, burning down, and the first blood goes over to high. Double. Double buffs right now for Cloud9. Helio teleport is up for both top laners. Tristana had back right there, so no AD carry for evil geniuses. But there's the TF ulti, there's the teleport in. It's gonna be the backup, the two men. Knock with their meteor takes a bunch of damage, the kickback from Helios, and they claim the kill. Now Krepo gets shockwaved in, but the shield comes up. Stays alive a few more seconds, but now the fight has engaged. All tech is around, and Helios does claim Dragon. What a play though by EG. It has worked out for them during this winning streak, and it is kind of the way they have to go here now. Wow, Medios gonna get caught up by Pobalt right there. Great ulti comes out, the slow in from Krepo as well. There's the ball, there's the shock, and gold card's gonna be enough though. That's gonna be a kill picked up now. High goes for the counter engage, Ignite is on. Pobalter runs away and gets just enough health back from leveling up to stay alive. 2 0 EG. Yeah, well, down this many ult. This is so bold by EG right now. Cloud9, but there's they're the almost board. daring Cloud9 to fight them. Medios has not come in in time to steal it, and that is Helios claiming another dragon. Evil Genius is holding those. 3,000 gold up. I mean, if any, uh, they actually made it up there without getting spotted, so it's all about whether High can fend off these four, and if Inox can escape the army that is Cloud9 right now. Looks like he's not going to be able to. Actually, does burn Flash. He wants to buy even more time. There's the Body Slam. Binding won't land, but they are still chasing Great Slow's hit. This will be Inox falling. Where is EG going to push, though? They could have pushed bottom tier two, but they're looking mid lane for the outer turret. They'll get that one, though, instead. They try one battle. more time. No sustain on either side, so the poke sticks from both ends. There we go. They're going to go for this one pretty hard. Half HP on this one. Where is Meteos? He's not quite in range. Runs forward. Not going to get in time. Shockwave does not catch a whole bunch of Krepo. Forced to run away there. Does go down to Sneaky. Inox knocked into the team. Helios going to take down Meteos, but two for one so far for Cloud9. Helios has got to be careful. High stays healthy. Falls picked into three more people. Does Helios chase on elimination? Looks like he's not going to. He's going to run away, but gets spotted out by Sneaky, who's got a red buff. Slows him down. Forced to wow. flash away. He's in enemy territory, though. No but he's got Pobelter to run chase. to. Pobelter still has ultimate, actually. This will be interesting. Lead C9. They will get that one. Of course, remember that turret advantage went C9, but Dragon went EG. Teleport, Inox. And they want to pick now onto Boss. Cleaver's going to hit. TF is going to reach in in time. And Krepo shows up. That is a kill picked up. Pobelter goes in for high, and they're going to find that kill. Now on towards Sneaky. Altec trying to do what damage he can. No slows available. The Flash. Forced away from Kog'Maw, Cleaver wants have Smite. Meteos and Lemon are around, and yes, he does have Smite. The puddle comes down. The health bar is actually staying pretty high for EG. They don't have enough to Meteos is health. spotted. He's trying. He goes in with the Black Shield. Can't smite it in time, but he goes for Pobelter. Goes down too fast. EG get Baron and a kill. Off of a lost team fight, they turn it into a Baron. Eliminated by the fact that EG did ward pretty well. And, of course, Cloud9's not even thinking about it. Not going to. So. 8,000 gold. Now, Evil Genius is looking pretty good 32 and a half minutes in. It's because, close. I think it's more expensive, it's worse, but yeah. the damage per slot is pretty close, to be fair. So, But defensive wise and sustain wise. Good flu, the flash in the slow to high. They got the knock, and he's got no way out. The kick into the wall and the shockwave. Not going to do anything for him. Altec grabs the kill and he jumps in on the Meteos, who's got nowhere to go. Black Shield's on, but you can't protect auto attack. See one of the high traffic areas of your opponent, see which way they go. Sneaky wants some harass, gets Krepo to about four fifths. Not many wards on Baron. In fact, C9 only four goes. balls. No TF. Might want this. Knock it from Krepo, and here comes the attack. They knock Altec again, force a flash away from Sneaky, but here goes Pobelter. But he can't find anything. Shockwave only gets Inox. He's got a flash away with a shield on. There's the ulti finally popped in. Pelter, nice cleanse, keeps Sneaky alive, but took some damage for that one. And that's going to really hurt his physical damage. He has barely any AD to crit in the first place, so it's still a very magic damage heavy profile. Mm -hmm. It's like just basically the Ruin King proc, this is entire physical damage. And Randwin's now out for Inox, so he's tanking up. Randwin started as well for Helios, got a Warden's Mail already. There's the force to teleport in. How quickly can Cloud9 get this Baron down? Very quickly is the answer. Can they even get a steal at this point? EG's slow. He's coming in. Baron Nashford goes down. The fight starts. Shock him. Get a Pobelter. But big damage comes through. Lemon is gone. A Pobelter will fall. But is this the fight that EG wants? They are chasing down. High has a shield. Sneaky gets away from the queue. High will die. Sneaky's got nowhere to go. In comes Altec. There's the knockback. Four, three kills picked up.
for Evil Geniuses on top of the Baron. Can they push? I mean, another amazing down softly. EG, that playoff run, they need at least three wins in the four games. There's a movement on high. Oh, that They're gonna go part. for the knockup. They catch balls a little bit, but Zonius is popped. Both are on the side. Looks for Seeky. Can he find him? Doesn't look for that just yet. Goes for high instead. Pops the Zonius. All tech is dominating after he picks up balls. High will go down. Now Minos and Seeky trying to run away. Only guys left alive. EG gonna easily collapse on those. That is the ace with no kills lost. Does no Bobelzer take that back? Evil geniuses are gonna take down Cloud9. Push in ever close to the playoffs. Wow, what a fight that was by EG. Po Belter in particular, a huge MVP. He gets in gold card range of High Zoriana and gets out alive, then lands multiple gold cards as the rest of EG is piling down and they finally find the fight they need to take out Cloud9. And there go the rest of the structures, evil geniuses. They needed three wins at least and that requires other teams cooperating. They've got one so far. The bottom two Jeez. teams in the standings are both 1-0 so far in Super Week. Yeah. And I don't know who's going to playoffs, Chat. I mean, that puts EG at 8-17, which is only two wins behind Curse for that sixth place spot. Also, you look at Cloud9. They are now 15-10. and 10. So if Team Solo Mid wins against LMQ in our next match, Mm -hmm. They would actually be tied with LMQ for first, and Cloud9 would be sitting alone in third. And keep in mind, Cloud9 plays TSA later this week as well, so you've got all these incredibly important matches. C9 looking for top two. Curse, Complex, the Evil Genius is looking to be top six, get out of that seven or eight spot. All of them have the chance to go where they want in the standings, and it's all about how they play over the next three to four games. Yep. We're just getting started. And it really feels like EG is kind of playing with nothing to lose here. They have been written off by everyone but themselves. And that's a nice mindset to be able to enter into. Yeah. That losing doesn't really have a penalty because it's so ridiculous that EG could potentially make the playoffs. Yeah. But, you know, it's becoming more and more real here. Can you think about it?